Um, well, good afternoon and welcome to the November 18th, 2014 meeting of the Northampton Transportation Department Commission. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the counsel for Ward 3 and also the chair of the commission. And um, let's go around the room and introduce ourselves for the benefit of, well, I think our audience already knows, but we'll do it anyway. Introduce ourselves, starting with our, our vice chair. I'm Lisa Klein, the city counselor for Ward 7. Dave Pomeranz, director of central services. Uh, Bill Hargers with the Board of Health for now. Devin Bruce with the uh, planning board. Richard Cooper, citizen. Russ Sanquitz, student police. Okay, thank you. So uh, I know there is a quorum, so we'll call this meeting to order. And um, I'll note the audio and video recording of this meeting. And uh, Councilman Klein is volunteered to take minutes. Is that right? Thanks very much. And Ned Huntley, Director of Public Works, now to the work of traffic engineers, have also arrived. Uh, so we'll start the meeting off with our public comment period. And that's, that's okay. you, Mr. Warner. Thank you, Ryan. I'm Mark Warner, and I, I will keep my remarks brief. I do appreciate Ryan's willingness to let me speak here today. Um, about five months ago, while I was serving on the Passenger Rail Advisory Committee, I became aware that the state planned to go and introduce by to build an underpass by the railroad track for pedestrians and bicyclists. This is the spot behind the Taco Bell, which would connect the existing pass. Um, it seemed strange to me that, this, that the cost of this, by the way, was two and a quarter million dollars, and which is seven times the cost of an average house in Northampton. But as I thought about it over the next day, I was starting to wonder, why is this even considered for grade separated interchange anyway, or grade separated uh, crossing anyway? Um, I tried to get this on the agenda of a subsequent meeting of the Passenger Rail Committee. The meeting was scheduled for July 25th. That got canceled on the 23rd. I subsequently felt that really this should have a little bit of further discussion in the forum. So I brought it in an article, an op-ed piece in the Daily Hampshire Gazette, which did get a positive response. But uh, the state has nonetheless uh, gone ahead with their plans to go and do this construction. According to Tim Doherty at the state, the view is that it's required for safety it's a um, essential by law, and it is also something that's consistent with Northampton's long-term plans. The first two of these are in fact wrong, but in deference to the third one, I did not pursue doing this directly with the state. Rather, I thought I sought to go and have some opportunity to go and bring this up for discussion by Northampton planners and policymakers, so that they could reconsider whether this was really something that was appropriate for the city. Um, so I, I will, as I mentioned, keep this brief. What I really want to talk about is, is this, to go through these things, is this site really something that requires an underpass? Is it really essential for safety? Is it required by law? By law, it is not required. There is no law that the federal government, and you can look at this from the Federal Railway Administration, Federal Highway Administration, uh, through anywhere in the DOT, um, or even within guidelines of ASHTO, um, or the Municipal and Uniform Traffic Control Devices, there's nothing that calls for this. And let me mention, too, that I'm a transportation planning consultant. I've been doing this for 22 years. And my orientation has been to help state DOTs and MPOs make sure that their transportation funding is being spent reasonably. This is something where I feel this is my backyard. I, I wanted to pursue this a little bit further. So there really isn't any law. But then the next one comes up, is it really something that is essential for safety? Is it something for which really an accurate interchange really is not possible? This is something where there's an alternative to two and a quarter million dollars. And in fact, there is. What I have here is a picture of the, of the area we're talking about. This is the Taco Bell over here. This is the railroad track. Here's the path coming in that goes down to Damon Road. This is 66 feet if you go straight across. If you go the long way across to connect this trail down to the other existing trail by the Taco Bell side, it's 308 feet. The federal, the, the standards from ASHTO and all the DOT, federal DOT guidelines is it should be no more than a 5% grade for a bicycle path. If you go straight across, the three foot difference right here is a 4.5% grade. And if you went clear across the full 308 feet, you're talking about a 1% grade. This is not something where an accurate crossing is not possible. It's not feasible. And when you're really talking about the need to go and otherwise put in a tunnel here that, again, is not required by law. 
and that there are all sorts of guidelines that suggest that you can do this with just using crossing gates, or not even crossing gates, you can do it just by putting a standard crosswalk and a warning sign that says this is an active railroad line. I want to point this out too. This is a picture, I pass this, I take Amtrak a lot down to New York from Springfield. I pass this park. This is a park in Springfield. This is on the main line here. And this is, this is a riverfront park. And this is, there are oftentimes bicyclists waiting on this side of the park. And this is where the park near is. And there's no crosswalk. I mean, there's no, there's no active warning signs here at all. This is a far busier rail crossing. This is also exactly the tracks that any train coming up to Northampton would cross. All it says here is, warning, active railroad track. That's it. So anything that all of these guidelines for putting things like active warning gates here are things, this is what ASHTO recommends at the discretion of the state highway transport, at the, sta of the state DOT. So these are options here that you could have. And the cost of these, the cost of this on, on two sides, even for two tracks, for buying one of these is twenty five to $40,000. Now, Ned, you have gone and, and done the DPW here in Northampton. And again, this would be a state project. Has done traffic on for $3,000 for the laid asphalt. The grading of 60 feet or 300 feet. And installing one of these should be less than $100,000. Contrast that for two and a quarter million. I can't help but think that this is going ahead only because there was a, that this started out as the, the stimulus program for the federal funds for the rail improvement. And the state then said, well, we can do our part, and we can support the construction industry here in Massachusetts by coming up with this plan for two and a quarter million dollars. And while they claim that this has been consistent with Northampton's long-term plans, I can't help but think that those long-term plans came about without any consideration for the cost or alternatives. Sure, we have a goal for safety, but should we really spend two and a quarter million dollars on it? Is there any loss, substantive loss in safety, by having an active rail crossing with a sign and with a, you know, you can have a little, a, an audible device on top of it too, that also avoids, that, so I don't believe there is a loss in safety here. This would be the standard procedure, or more than the standard procedure, at trail crossings or road crossings at railroad tracks all over the country. There is nothing that comes close in terms of a warrant, in terms of the traffic volume, the train speeds, the pedestrian volumes, that would suggest that this site should have an underpass. It is just an extravagance. And last week, when the voters of Massachusetts chose to rescind the plan to index the gas tax for transportation, you know, there are really overriding needs here for that money. There's a way to do this far more efficiently. And for the state to go and do this, I just think is being kind of, kind of crazy. That we have an opportunity here to go and really take a stand here and say, well, actually, maybe this really isn't something that we believe is really suitable. We recognize that not only is there this cost, and Northampton would share in the maintenance of this tunnel, but while there isn't any loss in safety by doing this, and there isn't that there isn't anything invisible by doing it, the tunnel, I believe, would also be a detriment to cyclists. You have a three-foot incline to get up on one side, on the Damon Road side, and on the other side, it's, it's already a grade, so there's no grade cranes at all. A tunnel would take you down 12 to 15 feet. So right now, the bicycles would have to go down far below what they're doing now compared to going up a few feet with an at-grader at grade across it. The other one is that it would avoid the issue, bicycles would no longer be subject to having to go through a tunnel where there's potential for graffiti, pee on the ground, or perhaps even you know, some vacancy or uses of, a, of just as a hangout. So I'd like to suggest that the city reconsider this, the policymakers and planners here reconsider that there might be some better use for these funds. And that while again, it's not the city that would come up with these funds. My experience over 20 years has been that state DOTs do listen to cities, do listen to municipalities. The municipality says, we don't really want this. The state will, the state, I've never come up with a case where the state has said, we're going to force this down you anyway. There's no law that calls for this. It would be detriment to Northampton. It would not be an improvement in safety. It would not be an improvement to ride comfort. And it would, and just one, and just the, uh, 
And you would have an opportunity also, I think, to come up with a better deal. You would not forego all this money, but I think you can make a request to the state through the PPPC if necessary to just say, look, we don't really feel this $2.25 million underpass is appropriate for us. We would like instead to go and call for an exchange. Give us a million dollars. We'll build a safe at grade crossing and use the remainder for things dedicated just within the transportation sector and just specifically to bicycle infrastructure improvements. I think that would be an opportunity here that would be a benefit to the city, would be a net gain for us. And it would be a sensible thing to do. And if you use your own sense of this tunnel, a tunnel for two and a quarter million dollars, and it's not an icon, this isn't something that is aimed at adding to the, the attractiveness of the city, it's behind a taco bell. But you can see that perhaps there's a better use for these funds. And I would, you know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna end here and you know, I, I'm not going to pursue this any further, but I did want to take the opportunity to bring this up in some form. I appreciate the opportunity, and I think that there is an opportunity here for you as an advisor group to bring this up with the state and say that perhaps there is a better use for this, and that we would appreciate that consideration. Well, thank you very much. Are there questions for Mr. Wire? Um, I just need your address yes. for the minutes, Mark. 177 Riverside Drive. Okay, well thank you again. Sure, thank you. Um, so there's, there's no other public comment. Today we'll get right to the agenda. And so with the approval of minutes, uh, first we have to play catch up and do the September 16th, 2004 minutes. So I'd accept the motion to approve those. Two packages. Okay, Ms. Bruce makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconds. Any discussion or changes to those minutes? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, well, we're doing the September 16th one. Are you not there? Though? Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. No, I actually was yes. Okay. Sorry. Council plan approves that message. Um, so, let's do it again. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'd accept the motion to put the minutes for October 21st uh, on the floor for approval. We'll approve the minutes. Okay. First makes a motion, so a second. Second. Two comrades seconds. Um, any discussion or changes? Uh, discussion. Um, the minutes that uh, haven't been in that long, but the minutes have varied in their length considerably, and they've gotten really long, and I'm just wanting to confirm that the details that are in there are missed or seem useful to the future. I mean, at pages of minutes, I mean, I, you know, it's just, you can summarize or you could have the details. I just mm -hmm. want to mention that I, I'm wondering if the minutes are useful as a reference document at that level of detail. If they are, then we should do them. But um, I was wanting to raise that question. Yeah, a, cu a couple points, Bruce. Uh, well, Mr. Hargraves, you want to? I don't believe that the detail that even I put in there is necessary according to open meeting. I think you are generous in your descriptive <laughs> tendencies. Understand. And, uh, and you capture a lot of the meaning, but I agree that that level of detail is not required. And the other piece of this is that um, if the mayor's administrative order passes, um, the DPW will provide administrative support. Is that correct in the future meetings? That's correct. And so commission members will be relieved of burden of, of taking Yeah, I'm not calling for a vote or anything. I just wanted to make a comment about that. I think it's, it's a well-timed and, and good comment. And also, I'd like to, to thank Mr. Hargraves for taking minutes, meeting after meeting, for like half a year. Here, here. So, so thank you. And um, yeah. you never have to do it again. I, I think we should pay what Hill got paid for most of <laughs> 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 their stride for those years. Anyway. Thank you. Any other discussion on, on these minutes? I just have a couple of just, just brief changes. Um, on the last page of October 21st, um, the first is right before item 16. The last sentence reads, no one was present to speak on the matter, and the TPC did not understand the request being made. Um, 
I, I suggest we, we strike and the TPC did not understand the request being made. I think we sought clarification, but I don't want to communicate that we were. I was writing uh, minutes, so I wasn't very clear. Okay. <laughs> so well, if you want to strike it, that's fine. You agree with that? Okay. So I make the motion and, and you second. Um, well, actually, let's just, let's just do all these at once. So that is that one change to strike and the TPC did not understand the request being made. I think that's more accurate. And secondly, in item 18, um, in the third line, uh, Lowenthal made a motion to look at the intersection of Myrtle and State Streets when the State Street application moves forward. I think it would be more accurate to say Lowenthal made a motion to not have this application ranked and look at the intersection and so on and so forth because that was a vote on whether or not we were going to rank. But does that match your memory of the I motion? Think, I think that's probably fair to say. Okay. Because I remember we took an affirmative vote to not proceed with that particular traffic calming application. Um, so those are those are my two changes. That line would, would read, Lowenthal made a motion to not have this application ranked and to look at the intersection of Myrtle and State. And uh, one more thing, it's uh, Hartwell with a T. Where is that? Same, same section. Um, oh, okay, yes, thank you. You don't want me doing me this again, okay? You did it on purpose, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> you want a spell check on that page? Yeah. Well, okay. Um, so we consider those changes kind of a friendly amendment. Um, why don't we move and second the amendment anyway? I, 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 I make the motion to change the minutes like that. And Mr. Huntley, you seconded? Yep. Okay. So all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Abstain? Okay, so at the minutes as amended, um, any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Oh, two abstentions. Okay. Well, luckily, we have record turnout tonight, so we were able to prove our math. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Um, any reports from committees? I'm guessing not. Judging by less. By pending me. No. Less. So no reports from committees. Um, item number six, DPW updates. I did not know about the date until I found out about the forum notification. I knew about the, the forum itself, and um, um, David Pomerantz and myself and Holly Mott from the Parking Committee and Wayne Fiden were a part of the committee to choose between two um, um, consultants who had submitted project, um, bids. Um, but uh, no, I didn't know about the actual date. But I think your point is well taken. And to the extent we can, we should. Sure I wonder if we can put a request into the mayor's office that if there's something that's like that, or there are any kinds of uh, public meetings or updates that this I, committee well, be informed and can be informed of something that this commission be informed. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I don't think it was it was done purposefully or maliciously in any way. I think it was just one of those things that were trying to get scheduled. Yeah, she, that's what I'm saying. There was a group of what, four of us? Five. Five. Oh, that's right. Terry, Terry Masterson. Masterson was in that as well. Um, yeah, so, but they, the parking committee, I believe, canceled their meeting in order to be at the parking forum. So. Oh, okay. I, but, they were at the meeting to hire, to make a decision about hiring, but not 
they weren't informed about the date until the press release came out. So I'm just suggesting that we hear about that before the public is, knows about it. Okay. Uh, I was, I mean, there was three meetings. There was a meeting with staff, right. which is right. David, Ned, and myself. Nancy was there, and then there was a meeting with the business community, and then there was a public meeting. That's, that's true. So we had some representation, some participation. Although I don't think we were notified until a couple of days before either. Right. Yeah, um, it's the, the mayor's initiative, so. Um, okay. Anything else on this on this announcement about the parking forum? Um, so DPW updates, if you please. Uh, New South Street uh, construction started today. They already excavated. Uh, what they say that it's gonna take them approximately a week to do. So hopefully by Thanksgiving, it will be all, all done. What did they do? Uh, they're moving uh, crosswalk next to the bridge. Uh, doing a little section, removing all the ramps, putting uh, new sidewalk pieces, uh, pretty much building two new ramps and uh, marking uh, cent new center line with the turning right. pockets. Are there any um, active controls going in with that one, or is it just remarking? It's remarking. Remarking with the pedestrian signs. Can't miss this opportunity. I'm sorry. I, you know, there's a ton of research that says that if you just have a marked crosswalk, that you, you are no safer than if you don't have a crosswalk. And my worry of moving it, I, I didn't realize that that's what this was. Although I did know from Wayne that we were planning to move the crosswalk further towards the bridge. Mm -hmm. My worry there is the traffic at, from the turn on Elm is going to be going even faster. So I guess I'm just still really. Uh, concerned about the crosswalk on that section of block. And I know you've had an earful about it, and and we've got tractors in the street, so it's your wrong time to be voicing your opinion. But but I I'm really uh, thanks thanks for hearing me again. No problem. Um, Greg's ceiling contract is all set for for this year. Um, so that's. Uh, uh, accomplishment. Uh, new uh, South Main Street, we have a tra just for the, uh, traffic coming application for it, and uh, we actually were able to put a double yellow center line a week ago. So that's an accomplishment too. Uh, and last one, the paving contract. Uh, Sylvester Road had been paved, I believe, two weeks ago. Uh, North Street speed uh, race crosswalks paved and uh, painted. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. North Street. North Street. North Street. North Street. Yeah. Much more effective. Yes, absolutely. And uh, next week, uh, Warner Brothers will come in and they will do all um, work that wasn't addressed during paving. For example sign at Cooper's will be moved next, hopefully next week before Thanksgiving. Uh, I did not forget about that. And all work that need to be finished before winter. So I think that's all. Are you going to move Cooper's business sign? Like <coughs> the Put in the... So we do also have, have a, we have 100% plans going into the state through niche engineering for the roundabout at Constant Pleasant Street. More than likely that is going to be out to bid this winter for spring construction. So you're aware of that. We're working with the final stuff for the Army Corps of Engineers right now. It's part of it's in the flood control structure. So that's the so last right. thing we're working that's on right now. How long do you expect the construction to take in the spring? <clears throat> Full year plus. Full year. Okay. Any other items? Yeah, I just want to talk about industrial one day. Oh, yeah. oh sure. Um, traffic lights are going in as we speak. Uh, the poles are up. I haven't seen the mask arms yet. No. I imagine they're coming pretty quickly. They're supposed to wrap that up by the end of the month. Where's their goal of the It's coming along. 
That's this. Yes, it's coming. Don't think it's too bad as there won't be a pedestrian phase there. It will be done as part of the Damon Road reconstruction later on. So we're working with the state right now trying to get 25% plans in for that project to move that forward for funding because they have it currently, I think, funded in the FY16 or FY17 TIP program, yeah. Damon Road reconstruction. Okay. Any other questions or discussions? And they are commencing some testing of the tracks with higher speed pilot engines or something. I'm not sure what they're using. But we filled in a little bit about that so there may be activity on the track. Mm -hmm. uh, some preliminary work to make mm -hmm. sure everything's all set and level and true and all that stuff. So Maybe that's why all the ballast stone fell down on Hockman and Hoyoke Streets. <laughs> yeah. on, on that point, um, the subject of so what was, it's, it's some kind of supportive stone in the bridge itself that fell down on, on, on the Hoyoke Street today. Hockman Road is the same thing. <laughs> was it Hockman? Both. Both, okay. And so you reached out to Pan Am Railways and were they responsive? I haven't heard back yet. You haven't? Okay. No. Well, they, Harold's blew a tire on one of his big records because of that stone and Pan Am came and they were like, today, give us a little now, three days ago. We got a call on it today. We don't, I went on right. and looked at it. Right. And I sent it to Ted Krug, who's my contact right. in Pan Am. He's the uh, head of engineering. Okay. I'm not sure if there's another person that should be done. Yeah. Spoken to a spokesperson or. I, I can forward it to Cynthia uh, Scarano, who's okay. the vice president of I think just communications. And she um, came out about a month ago and met with Lynn Simmons and. and Councilor Dwight and myself. So I can forward it and then you can have her information. Okay, great. In the future. Thank you. I just, did you hear about exit 18 northbound being closed again in Route 5? No. I heard a radio <laughs> call about it, but I never, I was on, at a meeting and I never followed up to see if it's temporary or permanent. I worked today, they've been working uh, all day today and uh, right on the bridge, so that's probably why it's so short term. Calls, yeah. Okay. Any else on DPW updates? Okay, thank you very much. Um, item number seven has to do with um, a long-standing issue that I've heard about frequently uh, from Ms. Maureen Keeley of 29 Hanshaw Avenue. Um, it's so much that I, I felt it was appropriate to bring to the commission because I think it's a very difficult problem to solve and frankly I'm not sure if there are easy solutions but I would really like to explain the problem to the commission and see if you had any thoughts about what might be done. Um, I don't know if you got this document that was sent after after the rest of the backgrounds in the agenda, but um, basically it's, um, it's it's a parking problem um, that stems from presumably lots of students in the area, in Smith College, um, parking along a fairly narrow road. And I think Ms. Keeley's basic concern is that those cars often block driveways, including her driveway. And it's easy to tell that that is her concern. If you go to this particular driveway, you'll see um, two uh, kinds of signs I've never seen anywhere else. There are do not block driveway signs on either side of the driveway. And attached to them are two large orange cones that, <coughs> according to Ms. Keeley, were provided by Smith College. And I think she moves them out to the street every once in a while. Um, but you know, I attached some, some photographs that show that parking, parking is just very, very dense. And I think occasionally creates problems for residents. So um, that is that's the, the brief explanation of the issue. Um, I'm happy to explain it further. I'd, I'd like to know whether members of the commission feel this is a significant issue, and if so, what what possibilities there might be for remedies. So parking in front of three feet within the driveway is just a ticketed offense, is it not? Mm -hmm. Can you make it a towing offense? No, without signage, that it goes on, etc. And it gets enforced on complaints, Nancy, right? Maureen has, she calls on a very regular basis. And um, I think a large part of the problem of the last couple of years is because so much construction has been happening in that area on various Smith College um, 
buildings that there's a lot of pickup trucks, there's a lot of vans. Um, she, um, she was in a position where she had to have, a, I, I believe, a wheelchair van come in for a while because of some medical issues and they were having a hard time getting in and out of her driveway. Um, it's a really congested area. We go down there on a regular basis with the parking enforcement issuing tickets. Um, sometimes people are within three feet of her driveway. Sometimes they're not, but it's a larger vehicle. And so she, she doesn't feel comfortable backing out of her driveway. Um, it's a really congested area. And um, I think our cutter and Ziskin done now. Yeah. So, so that probably will not have so many big pickup trucks in that area. I imagine there'll be punch list things happening though, probably over the holidays. Okay, so but maybe that will help. Because her big, she was, one of the big complaints that, that she had is that it was vans and pickup trucks and obviously you can't see around them even if they're not within three feet of her driveway. Um, and, and I'm hoping that that well, that was a big problem. Gotcha. It, was, it was three summers in a row with stuff going on in between as well. Um, so yeah. it's been a, several years. Okay. So, you know, people in that area have had to, you know, um, have that kind of double whammy of the students and the construction vehicles. But maybe, maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Well, thank so, you. And um, is there a public safety issue there with having? two vehicles pass each other with the parked cars there. Can you actually get three vehicles abreast from that roadway? It depends on the vehicles. Yeah, it does depend on the vehicles. Yeah. I know earlier, you know, I saw from Maureen, she asked about making it one way at some point, which... There's more street. Mm -hmm. You can't pass two cars. There's a ton of side streets that has the right. same route. That's true, North Street's very narrow. Yeah, narrow. by the deal team. Two cars can pass there. I, I walk there every single day. I walk my daughter to school every single day there. And um, it's narrow and congested, and that's what, and it's low traffic volume. And uh, honestly, I think I, I probably look at her driveway every day, and I, I never see a car actually parked in the driveway. I mean, blocking the driveway. I think it's a matter of degree. And I can understand she's uncomfortable about it, but. I think it's a very common situation. I think it applies to practically every driver and practically every student in the city. I, I, personally, I just don't think it merits our acting, except, except to enforce as, as necessary. And I'm glad that that happens. That seems to be the case. Oh, it's black. We tag and tow. You know, it's completely black. Now. It's three feet. Parking enforcement against it. But there's a lot of opportunity for someone to get out of the driver. It's the same situation we described in the city. So I, I certainly don't think we should be making it one way or getting rid of parking on the street or anything like that. I think keeping it narrow and congested is exactly what we want to do, where people want to park there and, and it keeps the traffic slow. Well, I'm remembering that the sign that they want to visit to us. Yes. Though, I'm surprised three feet sounds rather tight. Was there any discussion previously before my time of five feet? Is it in the three feet work for you? It was back in the committee days, six feet, five feet, three feet. It was because of compromise. It's, you know, difficult to enforce because there's no notice for okay. people. Just tell me you're comfortable with that three feet work. Any other comments on this matter? I, I, I appreciate the discussion. I know it's it's kind of it's a very specific issue. It's not kind of a global issue for us to tackle. But um, it sounds like the issue is basically enforcement, and that any resident with a problem similar to this should know what numbers to call. And, um, other than that, we're not we're not prepared to change any policy or street layout or even signage. In this case, is actually quite. Prominent signage about not blocking the driveway. Well, I, I think to say that it would, it would be selecting one street in town to do something to when we could all name you know, Monroe, Lyman, 
you know, I mean, I can go through my neighborhood and my neighborhood. Exactly. You have to pull over to let somebody go. And as the chief points out, north, the newly constructed North Street, the cars park on the street. In fact, our, you new, have to take uh, turns past. our new um, zoning laws are actually calling for those streets because that slows down traffic so that, I mean, that's the only way you can get 15 mile an hour traffic. So that's what a shared street does. We're actually going in that direction. Well, thank you. Anything else on this? Okay. I appreciate the discussion there. Um, so item, no objection, move on to item eight. Um, and this is um, about Maple Avenue off of Conn Street. And this request came um, recently. Um, basically, uh, the, um, the units above the Maplewood shops apparently have their parking on Maple Street, not in the Maplewood shops themselves. And so there are, there's a number of cars that turn in and out of Maple Street. And basically, Conn Street is, is a highly traveled street, and it's difficult to get in and out. And since it's so close to the uh, light, you have cars that queue up and, and block um, block Maple Street. And occasionally, a car from Maple Street will block Conn Street. Um, this is at least according to one of the residents there. And this resident pointed out that on Wilson Avenue, which is the next one, um, the next one over, there's a sign that says, do not block Wilson Avenue. And the request was whether a sign uh, could be put there. The question for us is if it, uh, not only if it could be, but should it be, would it be effective? Um, but that was the, that was the, the request from this, from this particular resident. So I want to bring it to the commission. <coughs> That cut through they refer to going from the Hampton lot to Maple Avenue is marked as one way. Is that city property in front of that, that barber shop? Not that I can tell. In the Maplewood shop, it's parking lot? I think it's part of their property. The city had easements. I went through uh, the plans a week ago when this first came up. As far as I could tell, the city took some construction easements, some temporary construction easements, but nothing permanent through there. Um, it's, I think it's owned by the Maplewood shops. But that easement is sort of, and that is kind of a, it's peripheral to the main point, right, of whether we want signage off of Maple Avenue, isn't that? That's how I would see it. So well, looking at that, if that, if that were not one way, that would mm -hmm. alleviate the whole issue. They can now exit Maple Avenue by going through the Hampton lot mm -hmm. as opposed to having to enter out the Conn Street. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, there are many more residences down that street than there are just the Maple Shop apartments above it. That's also so true. I would yeah. imagine they're doing that to try just uh, to keep the traffic from going in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. Yeah, there's apartments and a couple houses. Um, I, so, you know, Wilson Avenue has a sign like this. I don't know what the history of that sign was. What was it's a suggestion. Sign? Yeah, okay. It's not a law. Well, that's true. Sure. It has a sign that, that says what? Do not block. Do not block the intersection. I think it says do not block. Do not block. Well, I don't remember what it says exactly, but the implicate don't block the street as you queue up. So, other than that, I mean, you know, yeah, signage is signage, but. this gonna make a presentation to us or well not not today but you have uh, the request in email form and he actually made a little map no it's other map. yeah that comes from him so that's the extent of his presentation so the only thing I want to bring up I, I mean I've worked for the city for 15 years and this is the first time it's ever come across to me that it's an issue okay I don't know about the police department they might get more complaints about it than I did not really I mean I I just look at it, it, it's, if they don't block it, someone exits Maple to make a left-hand turn on a kind, so they won't be using due diligence, and you'll have those kind of accidents from people coming around the corner that you get from crossing left-hand movements all the time in Green Street and other streets, so we almost encourage that to happen. And it's really, it's a life cycle that you'll wait before something will let you out. And how long is that? 
So his issue is trying to get into the street, mm -hmm. not getting out. That's what he was complaining about, not having to sit there and all the traffic's queuing up behind him because he can't get into Maple Avenue. Yeah, huh. right, yeah, that would be the more serious concern. More concern that would affect more people. <laughs> yes. It's just a driver courtesy as well. Yes. Oh, I agree. But in any event, in, in this scenario where, as shown here, it's heading south on Old South Street and has to wait for northbound traffic to clear before he can make his left turn onto Maple. Uh, he's got to wait at most one light cycle for that traffic to clear. And he's, he's only going across the northbound traffic. So, only, only one light cycle. Well, there are two lanes for the northbound right there, but yes. I wonder that's worth But yes, I, I, I don't know that a sign is going to change that story at all. I just wonder why Wilson, I saw that Wilson had one, and I thought, well, maybe there's some, some rationale for it. <laughs> okay. I can imagine perhaps making him happier, but I cannot imagine it actually making a difference, practically speaking. Is anybody going to see the sign and, and go to stop and leave that gap there? It seems. I, I don't know. Like in some cities, they don't block you know the box. They have stuff painted on the, on the ground. I don't know how effective that is either. It's not a good You got it. it. Doesn't matter. There's one uh, the, where West Street comes into Elm. Also, it says do not block, and I see cars there. <laughs> Lights green and. Yeah, so Ned Huntley driving there blocking it once. <laughs> yeah. He blocked West Street lot, further down it? once with big wood yeah, boards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Councilor. You're awesome. Okay. Well, it sounds like we're not prepared to offer any definitive answer on this. So, so it's okay by kind of acclamation we'll move on. We're saying a discussion. Um. Now, from the previous meeting, there was an item about, um, well, I can start with Councillor Clients, uh, item 11, traffic calming on Bridge Road. I'd like to table this. The reason that it had been two meetings ago on the agenda was that um, a contingent of folks from uh, Bridge Road were going to come to the meeting if they're not here. Oh, it was okay. really just to interact with them. I think we can table that, and I will let them know that if they're interested, they put it back on the agenda. Okay. So you we were moving to table it, like formally table it. Uh, yes. So you make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Two seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Thank you. Um, so item ten is returning to the fact that the mayor's administrative order, um, if it is approved, would delete our commission and recreate again um, through the uh, executive, uh, <laughs> like magic. Mr. Science. And uh, um, consequently, you know, our, uh, the substance of the ordinance that establishes us would be gone, and I think it would make sense to, to write rules for our commission again. Our subcommittees or committees would also be gone, including the parking committee, bicycle and pedestrian committee, and so on. And we may want to recreate them. So at the last meeting, we started a discussion on these draft commission rules, and we decided to go away and think about it and return today and have a more substantive conversation. So I open it up to anyone who wants to start the discussion on that. I think I've said my, my piece on it. So under 1.3, we have the traffic engineer will take the minutes, unless another member of the commission chooses to assume the responsibility. The way the administrative order is written is that the DPW will provide a clerk to do that work or administrative support. So what I'd like to have it say is a city employee shall take minutes unless another member of the commission chooses to assume that responsibility. The city employee? A city employee. A city employee. Even though I'm providing, I don't know if it's going to be a, a clerk, a principal clerk, my office manager. I think it's perfectly reasonable that you want it not to be an engineer if you have another choice, but I'm questioning, um, I don't know what the proposed change says, but we should match it probably. So if it says DPW, should we just say DPW will provide? Sure, that's fine. So the DPW, the DPW, 
I believe it said, I don't have it in front of me, I believe it said the DPW provide technical and I thought it said clerical support, mm -hmm. not administrative. And, um, well, an employee of the DPW. Yeah, I, I, I suggest it just match whatever that language is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have to say I'm going to have the original command order. I didn't bring it today. This? Who's got this? Uh, that's, the, that's the draft we're working on for us. Mm -hmm. So, well, if, if um, why don't I just make a note to have it match the, uh, the mayor's language? Do you want to go through typos and punctuations here, too? You just want me to send those to you. You could send those to me. Okay. I'm sure it's full of them, so it'll take a while. James? Um, in the past, we've had um, not subcommittees, but committees, right. because this is a commission, not a committee. Oh, yeah. So it was a commission that had committees under it, and those committees could have subcommittees. But that means the bike pad and the parking and the public transportation would be committees, not subcommittees. Okay. Fine. Under item 1.2 in the historic past for, for quite a number of years, the traffic engineer has been able to vote in my absence. So I see we're changing that going forward. Is there a particular mm -hmm. reason why? If I couldn't make a meeting, I asked him that this is the way I want the vote to go, and he couldn't vote? No, I think we may want to add something that says, unless serving as the the director's designated. Yeah, okay. Sorry, just for the minutes, where are we now? Um, we're 1.2. 1. 2. Okay. Sorry to take around. But I, I do like the idea of having Ms. Forrestal up here with us, and she relies so much on her. Ryan? Yes. Is that provision for the designee for the DPW hold for other departments? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm feeling it might, okay. but I don't know why. It's fair fair, right? That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense to me that, that police and parking, uh, sorry, police and planning would have uh, similar interest. Right? Can't assign a city bodies, city departments. Okay, so we'll clarify that. What we want to say is that the traffic engineer and, and the our parking officer can uh, can sit here in addition, even if we had a full, you know, um, if, if every commissioner were here, they could still sit with us and participate, but not vote. But if you're gone and they're serving as your designated. Okay. Wasn't there also a concern last time we discussed this about losing some of our membership because it wasn't specifically mentioned in the administrative order? So here's, here are the changes to my knowledge. First of all, we currently have 12 members and one vacancy. The administrative order would would set us at 11 members. There would be no specific um, delegate from the Board of Public Works. There'd be no specific delegate from the Board of Health. However, there would be two additional citizen members. So we could we could reconstitute the committee in exactly the same way it is today. Mr. Hargraves wouldn't represent the board, how to be a citizen, and Mr. Harwell wouldn't be a... I briefly asked the mayor on that no. last week about that, and he looked a little confused, so... I don't think they've addressed the possibility of Gary and I just flopping over into it. Maybe they want to open it up to others, I don't know. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not clear. I, I don't imagine that every single person serving on a commission or a board in the city is going to, have to be re-nominated Firm by the city council, but I don't know what the process is for that. The impression I had is that all the committee members have appointments that have been recommended by the mayor and approved by the city council, or recommended by the city council, whatever it is. And I thought those terms would keep going until they expire, and then their person is reappointed again. I if he chooses to, yeah. I suggest I was chosen by the board of health. No, I wasn't seated by the mayor, so. Oh. Well, it we'll does see seem like the status change, if that's what these folks want, then there would need to be an appointment by the mayor. Yeah, potentially. I, I just don't know. 
um, is, is it do you, well, I can find that information I mean, out. An example is like the Public Works Commission, what they're proposing to name it. I don't believe there's going to be any, cha any change in the personnel that are the, uh, the citizens right, that exactly. are on it. Right. But they do have terms that are expiring in 2014, 2015, 2016, because that's the way the charter was written. In fact, the new charter is written the same way as so that. Those mm -hmm. local member bodies will serve for right. three year periods, and one third of the committee or commission will expire each year of that three year period. So I think it's probably very <coughs> similar to what they're looking to do here. Just that they change it from designees because there is no more Board of Public Works going forward if it gets approved. And, but I'm not sure why they took out the Board of Health because they're not changing at all underneath the administrative order. Yeah, I couldn't speak to that point. I don't know why that changed. Any it, other? It, it would be worthwhile to clarify with the mayor because it'll remind you of perhaps of my question. Or not. Okay, so what I will do is I'll, I'll ask the mayor specific, uh, specifically what happens to your two seats for the Board of Public Works seat and the Board of Health seat. We'll see if you still have an excuse to get off the committee. I think the next logical question is to ask if Gary and I want to stay. Oh, <laughs> your actual Let's feelings, not get, Matt. We don't need to do that, though. No. Well, you could tell us that if you want to stay. Well, I don't think I can live with, without the extra income. <laughs> <laughs> with an enormous sense of civic pride installing signage every once in a while. Hi. Could you send this to me in Word format so I can make some yes. corrections, send it back to you? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Um, any other comments? Yeah, we're ready to move on. So, oh, other, of course. Yeah. Other sections? Yeah. Uh, in uh, two point. Uh, Five. You have the traffic and parking subcommittee, which would be committee, not subcommittee. But more importantly, um, we've all we've always had a parking committee of this commission, but it's, we've never had a traffic and parking committee right. of this commission. And it seems to me that it's redundant, given that the whole commission is the transportation and parking commission. Um, so, and, and I. It seems to me uh, probably 95% of our business on the commission is traffic, motor vehicle traffic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just can't really imagine that. Uh, well, maybe you had some rationale that you wanted to share with us for a This was really nothing but me trying to think of all the areas that we cover and then cutting them up neatly and putting them into three committees. And so, um, you know, we have the bi uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Subcommittee, um, and then we have the Parking Committee, but related to that is kind of automobile, you know, traffic. And then we have kind of public transit, you know, buses and trains and that kind of thing. So I was trying to cover the spectrum of transportation um, that might come up. But I mean, I, your point is well taken, and it was more of a conceptual, you know, decision. And it, in fact, to be honest, you know, I, I presented this to the parking committee, and I said, "You may well just not exist anymore. Um, let's discuss what whether you want to exist and how you want to go forward." And I think there is still discussion within the parking committee about exactly what their role should be. Quite frankly, um, I know there's some history there. Um, the good thing for us is we have an opportunity to build everything from the ground up again, which I think is. A um, is, is a good opportunity. Um, one thing I'd suggest, and I'm fine if you want to just if you want to just take that out, I'm fine. But another possibility is we could we could write rules and write committees later. If in fact I, I hate to put in committees just to put in committees and not have a real sense of how we're going to operate. If, if the commission wanted to do that, I would be fine doing that. So, so in other words, not specifying any committees at all in these uh, working guidelines or bylaws. I mean, how, what are you what are you calling these officially? The okay, so our rules, the rules. Okay. So the rules would not. <coughs> they would just say the commission may um, constitute committees at any point as as it sees fit. Yeah, and then perhaps if we got this sorted out, we could we would amend the rules at, at any time and add committees if we thought that would be helpful. 
you may want to keep the bicycle and pedestrian committee if you can, <coughs> you can uh, articulate a clear mission for that committee, for example. Well, I was going to get to the next, but um, okay. I, I'd also be happy. I'd also be happy leaving the rules general and and suggesting that the commission can can constitute committees as as it sees fit. And we would do it sort of. Um, is there another commission? Uh, let's see. Is there any other template that we should adhere to elsewhere in the city? Not, not to my knowledge. Um, in the template, but I know the Board of Public Works had a subcommittee for looking at the private ways when we first started looking at that four years ago. Um, it was kind of project specific and had a period of time that it worked and then it just disbanded itself. And then we started the process of all the conversions. Well, it wasn't a standing committee, it was just something that was short, fairly short lived. That's one of the tensions in the parking committee. I think some people expected it to, to go away. And some people thought it was going to be permanent. One of the things I remember we talked about at the beginning of this year when we first met was um, taking some time to kind of study, look at each of those committees and uh, develop, if we were interested in maintaining them, develop the job description, as it were, for the committees. So I'm wondering if we can, in fact, write this in some kind of general way where we're not yet appointing or uh, talking about the existence of these committees and um, over a period of a few months look at each of these committees and make a decision about whether or not we think they're necessary and if so actually develop some kind of um, guidelines for what their responsibilities are going to be. Because as you say I think we really do have an opportunity here to reconstruct to really identify what we need and what we don't need in the city and reconstruct this this commission and its committees in ways that are actually useful and then have clear definition, I would say. I, I would be fine with that. Uh, the only thing I would not want would be to have no language about a bicycle and pedestrian sub, uh, committee and then have a bicycle and pedestrian committee that somehow operates as a rogue as a rogue unit, um, if we're going to have if we're going to have one a committee like that, I would like to at least list it as existing and explain who the members are and that kind of thing. But for the others, I completely agree. I don't want to create a you know I don't want to recreate a, a public transportation subcommittee if we're not clear on what it is yet. But we could be clear in maybe two months or something if we took some time. There's no rush to do it. Right. But these are rules also, and we say in here that the rules can change at the end of every year. I think they can change prior to that, too. I, I, I don't see why there would be any need to restrict amendments to our rules. Well, you could just have a catch all may have the discretion to establish such committees as they be necessary in research and implementation of certain policies and procedures. Yeah, no, I think and that's. You can form them and disband them. That's three months longer. I agree. I would just want when we form them to write them write them down somewhere. So it's you know. It's Is there any uh, legal status to these rules? In what sense? Uh, are they legally binding? Um, and if so, then well, do we need to consult with legal advisors? I mean, my preference would be to to run these by the solicitor for good measure. I can tell you the administrative order. Um, which obviously does have you know, the force of law, says that commissions can create their own rules. And with no further guidance beyond that? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think it, it went into detail about yeah. what you, but you know, I mean, the things we're proposing are sort of just, I, I don't see what would be where you run into a legal, into legal tension in any way. Yeah. Um, but we should, in fact, take a look We couldn't have rules that contradicted the fact that we're advisory. We couldn't claim 
adjudicatory authority or something in our own rules and expect it to be binding. So, well, so on, on the committees, um, for now, I mean, we do have an active parking committee. We do have a bicycle and pedestrian committee. I don't want those to go away. Um, you know, and we have, you know, the month of December to meet as well. Um, Who knows what's going to come out of the parking consultant's report, too? That might get referred to subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, I was thinking they may make recommendations as to what this is. Mm -hmm. Although she had some positive things to say about the transportation parking. Anyhow, she's, I don't know if her scope of work includes clearly identifying who does what when it comes time to set parking rates or if that's just going to remain in the executive branch, the city council approval. I don't know. If we do uh, keep these, I would propose uh, expanding the description, the uh, job descriptions were uh, 2.6 bike committee. Uh, so it's a little more consistent with the, what I hope would be the parking committee. So you want, should I say what I thought about it, or have we not decided that we're going to have it at all? Well, um, I, mean, I, don't, I think we should, keep, we should keep the bicycle and pedestrian committee functioning first. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. But whether you want to write it now or right. write it for the month of December, yeah, I think that's fine too. I'll get, I mean, I, I scribbled these last ones, so I'm happy to do it anytime. But I just said it. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you want to read it out loud. Okay. Um, I thought uh, that uh, we should, there are only two sentences now. And the second sentence could read instead of the committee will focus on bike. Uh, transportation pet safety and the issue of walkability. I thought I could say the committee will focus on the bicycle and pedestrian transportation system safety and accessibility, including on road sidewalks and multi use trails. I just think if we're going to create a committee, it has to be there has to be some formality there, and we need to write a letter or some kind of description if it's ad hoc. Um, well, the city already has processes for the creation of ad hoc committees. I think we just have to find out what they are. Does the city have processes for that? Yeah. What creation are they? of I, I don't know. Oh, okay. But I think we can find that out easily. Okay. I would also add that the uh, um, it might be I think it'd be appropriate for us to add for each committee uh, that uh, something explicitly says either maybe a general statement for all the committees or or specifically for each committee. This committee is advisory and reports or can make recommendations to the larger commission. Just to make that clear. Okay. Is that is there no language like that? Uh, well, currently, for instance, parking says it will in general take a holistic approach. Well, 2.2. So yeah. The commission may refer matters to subcommittee for consideration or request a recommendation on any matter. Matters referred to subcommittees must be returned. So, if they are advisory, by virtue of that, the definition is correct. Yeah, I would think 
the, the section before we get into describing each specific okay. committee, there's a section that describes any committee. And that's 2.2, right. as the chief said. Okay, you're right. Good enough. Good yeah. enough. I agree. Okay. You remember the whole purpose of this was to shrink all the extra legal lease language that can tie people in knots. Yeah. So the overall description of each department, which used to be this big, is now this big. You know, and I think this is an effort to kind of do the same thing. You start adding language, it almost becomes contrary to the purpose of what we're set out to do. You know, you're, you're empowered with the right, the ability to do certain things, and you don't have to delineate everything. You just make those decisions and operate as a committee. Okay. And you don't get locked into the language. So, can we or can't we do that? That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. A member of the audience who wishes to speak on this point. Thank you, Councilor. Is that okay Come with the commission? Okay. So um, and it has members. to do with this topic. So can, can, can we Oh, yeah, they got it. Sorry. Vote me. It means it's okay because we're, at, we're in the middle of a discussion in the commission. So I want to recognize Mr. Nash. Or do you want to wait to recognize Mr. Nash? Okay. Second. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Please. You got a vote? All in favor? Aye. <laughs> opposed? <laughs> who opposed? <laughs> I bet so. Uh, G, uh, I'm Jim Nash. I am the chair of the Passenger Rail Advisory Committee for the Mayor. Uh, I was a member of the Public Transit Committee for, I don't know, six, seven years, eight years, before it kind of disbanded and disappeared. Uh, I just want to make a plug. I, you're discussing possible committees, not subcommittees, but whatever. Um, and I, I just want to make a plug for public transit and also to broaden it beyond what we used to focus on was just uh, bus transportation but now that we have passenger rail coming to the valley that it's important that the two actually interface effectively and i think that as the service increases and moves into commuter rail having that uh, an ongoing discussion about how that interface is going to happen um, is, is going to be really important um, the public transit committee over the years, we, you know, you, only now can you see some of the stuff that we actually worked on that was really effective. We have, um, we have uh, bus shelters at the high school. We move bus stops around downtown to accommodate parking um, so that the, the, the system worked better, but also the shop owners got the parking that they needed. Uh, we tweaked schedules so that uh, kids could take the bus to school. Um, we, um, we dealt with issues like, uh, you know, neighbors saying, well, it's hard for, you know, people are standing in front of my house, can we move the, the stop to a better location? So these are the types of things that, uh, that were addressed and, you know, frankly, didn't reach the level of big deal because we, we uh, part of the committee was also having uh, people from PVC, PVPC and from uh, PVTA also sitting as part of uh, the, the, the committee. They weren't members, but they made a point of being present because the city called this commission together. So the public would show up, they'd voice their concerns, and we can actually get some really great stuff done. So I'm making a plug for continuing that committee with the idea that, um, that it could be broadened. And, um, and I don't know the, the, the future of the, the public uh, transit or, or the passenger rail committee. It's you know I, I don't see that we're going to go on forever. No, let's hope not. But um, but I could see. But I do see that that initiative morphing into something else that could serve this committee commission, whatever you are. <laughs> so Jim, when when the rail commission dissolves, do you go back again and get involved in the public transit? I, I would <coughs> love to be involved with public transit. So we definitely won't do it. Then. <laughs> Just kidding. Do we have to take a vote to, for the commission to address the public? Can I ask some questions? Oh. Are you facetious? Yeah, go on. Yeah, you take a vote. You're facetious. But I, I'm very curious. Vote, then. It, so <laughs> the new train station is the old train station. Is that right? Or am I getting? Yeah. Well, yeah. The the Close. new Close. platform is going to be near the old train station. Uh, but. Uh, okay. Just south. In the parking lot, so to speak. All right. So where where you drive in to the parking lots, you can drive up to 
Spaghetti Freddy's, there's mm. a circle there. Right. Is it big enough for a bus to go in there? And would is PBTA does PBTA have any plans to do regular stops? That, that is a great question, and that's something plans. that the passenger rail advisory committee is hoping to have answered on December second. Okay. When um, Tim Brennan, is that the name? Mm -hmm. He's going to be there, and Tim oversees PBTA and PVC, PVPC planning around transportation. So I hope we get an answer. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the details. Or you know, somebody gets off the train, they're using a, a wheelchair. How did they get to the bus that's at, heading over to Amherst? Do they have to actually um, go down to Strong Ave and loop around? And or right now we don't have a, an accessible direct route over to the bus. And it may be that there, we have a temporary bus that shows up because we're only getting a train north and a train south each day right now. So, but, what, but once service uh, picks up, that, that's gonna be more, much more complicated. What about taxi stands and call <laughs> stations to call a cab? Uh, is there a place to be out, to, uh, out of the rain if you get off and you're getting off on an open platform? Has it got a roof on it? There's a roof on it. But no walls? No walls, it's not protected. As far as I know, there's no phone services, there's power for lights, mm -hmm. that's about it. And we're going to get a temporary platform before the new platform goes in. So I, I'm not sure there's even going to be shelter with the temporary platform. I would just like to <clears throat> steer the conversation maybe back to the rules and have a later conversation, if it's okay, and have a later conversation about the well, sure. Uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm realizing is that there, as I was sitting here looking at the rules and we were talking about whether or not we wanted to have committees name the committees, it seems like a public transportation committee makes an awful lot of sense. Whether it's okay. whether there's anyone doing anything or not, but to name it as part of this commission it seems to make perfect sense to me. Okay. That's all I was asking for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and you can feel free to tap me for how to, for wording and what it should be looking at. Jim, as long as you're here, maybe we can ask, do you actually have any kind of written guidelines for the, the public transportation? You know, I, I think I submitted stuff to Wayne um, that Leslie had sent me. I mean, we were a subcommittee, and so we kind of operated I, I don't know. <laughs> we were kind of fly by the seat of the pants. Okay. Uh, well, what's 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 your pleasure in this? Do you want to? Thanks for listening. I agree. I agree. Thank, no, thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. I think it's appropriate to, to have a public transportation. Okay. As long as we're going to have a parking committee and a bike parking committee, as long as we're naming committees, I think. I think that one belongs. Is that kind of a consensus? Yep. Yeah. Great. Um, I think the, the language that describes it could use some enhancement. And so, Jim, if you have if you have thoughts on that, I can send you the draft. The draft. Maybe we can sit down and we can draft them together. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, that would be very helpful. And. Um, I don't know, if there's one other section after the committees. I don't know if you want to address that briefly. Um, I think this is actually pretty important. Um, 3.1 3 is, you know, it just, maybe it's not even necessary, but it says we can, we can make recommendations about lock closure and special events and so forth, but we're not actually, we're not actually doing it ourselves. And of course, traffic common requests are, are totally you know, the established procedure for them, the traffic calling manual. But um, 3.3 is a procedure for, for parking requests from individuals. And we've talked about this a little bit in the past. And I, I feel that we don't have a, um, a consistent way of dealing with parking requests. When someone comes in and says, you know, I want this space to be moved out from out in front of my house or you know, we've heard all, all different kinds and I just I want to have a, a process to, to deal with them 
maybe as, as the chief was suggesting about another issue, it, it doesn't belong in these rules, but um, would love your thoughts about but how to, how to adopt a policy like that. I mean, doesn't the basic criteria give us a lot of the way the several factors and make a decision? Yeah, I, I guess the question is how much of it do we want to involve a parking committee? How much, how much of it should be done in the whole commission? I mean, we saw how much time we spent today on the two, on the on the on the Maple Avenue and the Henshaw Avenue issue. And is that okay? Is that is that our purpose and our mission, or is it? better to ask a subcommittee to make that. Please. I have a strong opinion that I want the DPW and the police department in that discussion. At every stage? Well, or is there I, a place? I don't think it should be settled by the No, not settled. Or, or a, yeah. a, a, a committee, as we're calling it. Okay. So I think that's, that's I, our opinion. And I tend to, oh, just, just briefly, um, I mean, I, I agree, and I, I wouldn't think the, the part of the committee would, would settle it, but rather be part of the process to maybe, for example, look at community support for it. But it would always have to come back to the commission to, as you say, be reviewed by the state departments. And uh, Councillor Klein had something first, then. I, I was actually struck by the things that uh, Jim Nash was just sharing that his committee has handled. You know, they've actually overseen the movement of a bus stop from one place to another and other issues like that. And so. We have some real inconsistency in what kind of, I mean, I don't know exactly what he meant by that. They had it done, they had to, I'm sure, talk to the PBTA, and the PBTA makes the decision and so forth, but they're clearly proceeding without any, running anything by us. So we just have an inconsistency from committee to committee. And I'm, this is, again, I hate to be a broken record, but I feel like we, as a commission, need to somehow codify and I understand what the chief is saying, and I agree we don't want to create too much wording and too many um, parameters, but at the same time, I think that we have three different committees and each one has a totally different level of authority to make recommendations and, and work with you know, outside groups to get things done. It just it doesn't make sense to me, and I'd really like to see us as a commission have more oversight over what each of those committees is doing and create some parameters. Um, they can be broad parameters, but some parameters. Chief and then James. Well, again, part of the process, uh, it's first of all, I think your concern is do we do it all ourselves or do we use through the com committee? And it says we can refer it um, to the traffic and parking subcommittee. They'll review any requests, refer to an assessor, of course, in terms of basic criteria, and then report back to us. And the commission shall consider the formal recommendation of the subcommittee as well as other advice from city departments, including the Department of Public Works. You could add police department in there. That's what's wrong. Like. But it does have that process. It comes to us, goes to them, and then comes back to us. That's your concern. We would be doing all the, the work. This kind of lays it out that way. You're talking about 2.2. Responsibilities in relationship to commission? No, parking change was 3.3 process. Okay. But I, so I, when you were asking your question, I was thinking 2.2. Uh, okay, I just wanted to uh, point out, uh, although it may have sounded from Mr. Nash's presentation as if the Public Transportation Committee was acting autonomous, autonomously and that we hadn't heard anything because of that, I think. Rather, it's we haven't heard anything because they haven't existed recently. And in fact, when they were in existence, they were coming here to the, to the commission and reporting and requesting changes in parking and so on. They weren't they weren't acting unilaterally. So I think there was it, uh, over a number of years, all under Leslie Stein's stewardship, uh, very active uh, work on their part, but also active communication with us. And, uh, I think it seemed like fair and reasonable. Um, well, I mean, does, does the process, I mean, the, the chief kind of fleshed out the process a little bit about parking change requests. I mean, does that sound, does that sound more what you were thinking, Devin? It's fine. Would, would that be okay? And again, it's something that we can change. We could, we could have it in effect and we could try it and we could, we could say, gee, this doesn't really work like we thought it was going to work and then we could make changes. Um, all right, well. Is there any more discussion generally on 
these rules. I know it's kind of a pain to sit around a group of, of 10 or so people and try to write a three-page document, but I appreciate your, your attention and your, your thoughts about it. Thanks for going. Yeah, thank you. It's really easy to do it if somebody did a whole draft first. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So I guess what I would suggest is I, I can take the comments that I've heard tonight, kind of put them into you know, track changes kind of thing and bring it back for December for the commission to review. Great. And perhaps we'll take a vote, perhaps not. But does that sound good? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, we should move on. Any, uh, we're ready to move on, right? Yes. Okay. Any new business? Is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? <laughs> Anyone want to second the motion to adjourn? Second. <laughs> uh, any abstentions? Any opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.